to understand how Jamaica's most iconic community, Rastafarians, were demonized and persecuted by the Jamaican government in the early years. And for many years, Rastafarians were concentrated in a community called Baka Wall. This community was adjacent to Coronation Market, the largest market in Kingston. In 1966, Baka Wall was raised by then Minister of Development and Welfare Edward Siaga, who sent bulldozers to destroy the ramshackle dwellings that had been erected, ultimately replacing all the residents with supporters of the ruling Labour Party. Rastafarians were dispersed to other areas of the country where many had already taken up residence in rural outposts and hilltops. Some in Jamaica consider this dispersal to be the single most formative moment in the movement, but it was preceded by a string of persecutions. Principal among these persecutions was the Coral Gardens incident, also known as Bad Friday. I'm an ex-Jamaican policeman, retired detective inspector. I recall even in my own growing up, Rastafarians were not accepted per se as ordinary citizens. Eventually I joined the force and I recall that um, in our shooting range, the targets were oftentimes the image of a Rastaman with locks placed there, and in our mind, that was the look of a criminal. And so we would use those images as targets. If for any reason, if they catch you with like a weed, and you got jail and you're a rasta, the first thing they would do is trim you. And the rasta parade movement in Jamaica was 1950. When a man by the name of Wappy King go on the Palisades Road, which is the Norman Manley Airport Road, and there was a Chinese girl and a Chinese boy on the beach, and him killed the boy and rape off the girl and threw the girl in her, the sea, thinking she got young. And then he ride off and leave her. When she get rescued, she told the police that it's Rasta. Because the guy have on him beard. But he didn't have on no ear on him head. He was a rascal. And this guy, a Rasta, so when him do him wickedness, him go shave off. So, there was a man who saw him coming from that way on a bicycle and know that the guy is that kind of guy and see him trim off in bed. So he report to the police, that guy. But the girl said, well, a man her, he must be in what he's been raping. She crop up in face, which, I have a whole heap of mark in a, a fingernail, you know, mark up in face. So everywhere them see a rasta, them take knife and cut half him head off in face. I search with them mark them now to find out. So every man who have a beard was being persecuted for that. One, two, three, four. Holy Thursday. 1963, a news come over the ear. Say, uprising in Montego Bay, Carol Guard. Six Rasta, burn down a gas station, kill a man, three of the Rasta get shot dead, two arrested, one at large, 300 in jail. I wrote about the incident of the Rastafarian uprising as of April 11, 1963. I was one of the police officers in that incident. We received the reports from the, was at the station, from the area that a 
gas station was on fire. So I went in the armory and the inspector had ordered that I take out six rifles with ammunition. I took the rifles out and they were distributed among the men, including myself. And we loaded along the Island Rover and went towards Carl Gardens. We are in Salt Spring, which is very important in the Curl Garden incident. Why is it important? Because the brother who had the problem with the system with Babylon, he used to have his farm just about about a mile or two from here, above Shaw Spring in, in, in Plow Hill, next door. With Shaw Spring and Plow Hill are like neighbors, you know. Most of the people in Shaw Spring, Plow Hill, work on the property at Rosal. And that was he, not only was he popular among Rastafarians, but he was popular among the underprivileged youngsters in the entire area. I grew up in a farming community. I love to see plants grow. And one of the things that I had to do whilst a young cop in Montego Bay was to go out with the bulldozers to bulldoze farm crops on the cardyard's property. These people would have gone on the property, they have no permission, and cultivate their crops. And so they were trespassers. And so the headmen would call the police. Police would arrange to go there and then bulldoze the crops. And there were many times that I stood almost at the point of tears when I saw those beautiful crops, cabbage, corn, cassava, yam, being plowed up. Then go back there the second time and then do the same thing. And after they read, put on what did they know? But I said, no, what is this? Come, see me try clear. Then say, man, you come down too much from the from Rosal. So hard branch up, second time. Then chop down and reap for them to reap and go away. Third time, then when I come back now, Rosal got to mash with the plant, plant corn, plant corn. So when the police then go there, and Rosal got to mash it. He said, drop it, wash the man, drop it, call this. Drop and cut this. You don't say about him, Marjorie. When you come up here, when you go and be in it and all different kind of things, and I rush them and I tell you, you say, if you drop it. And I got a little, I cut this, farm, the farm, my little, my, my perform, my little perform. How do you come to me if you drop me, my, my cut this? A three bullet then give him. Then he told me. He was working in one of the Cardiard's place, a part of the Cardiard's property in Carl Garden's area. And of course, he was planting marijuana. Well, the police went there to, not to read him for marijuana, but to execute a warrant for him to leave the carjacks property. And uh, it so happens that the day when the police went there to serve him this summon, um, there was seemed to be, he was uncooperative and there seemed to be some altercation between himself and the policeman who had gone there to serve him the summon and the police shot him. He was not dead, he was injured, and he was taken to the hospital and served maybe about, stayed maybe about three months in the hospital before he was released. After he was released, he was taken to before the court, tried, convicted, and sentenced to time serve and three months in prison. He was a very hurt man, hurting man, and when he came out of prison, he vowed that he was going to take revenge on those who had caused him to go to prison. Instead of making the man get his medication to keep him, they sent him man to prison at 68. When he released from prison, check back his doctor because of infection, him feeling belly start as well. He declared a policy that I think he can find five more men with himself and declare a revolution. I blame him not because I done nothing wrong. I was a headman for the property where he didn't do nothing. Just before the Coral Garden incident, 
the Sunday evening. I was living in Flankers and he came and looked for us and didn't tell us what he was going to do. And the Thursday, I had a cousin live next door, but he were, wasn't living up here, he was living down the bottom there. And he run and come to me and said, yeah, you know, say your father dead. He said, oh, my father for dead. He said, yeah, man, my father in the, the Carol Garden incident. Your father in the Carol Garden incident and me understand, so then kill him. So we formed two party of men, about 15 men each in a Y formation. And we decided to go in search of these men. By then, a lot of civilians who have heard about the incident that joined the police party. And we were going in search of the men who had done these heinous crimes. We saw about five or six Rastafarian men coming towards us and they paused for a little while after they saw the police vehicle. Then we got out of the vehicle and one of the men in my party took up his rifle, aimed at the men, he pulled the trigger, the trigger went up but the gun did not go up because of course there was no ammunition in the gun. So when the men observed, the rest of the men observed that the gun did not go off, they more or less thought that the guns were either defective or they were not loaded. So they spurred on, they began to shoot arrows, and then they attacked the police. The police was defenseless, and the citizens who thought that they had to do something because they, in their opinion, the police was not in charge of the situation. So they formed themselves in vigilante groups. And um, the fact that they heard that Rasta men were involved they decided to search out for every Rastaman. In fact, um, whether you are black, white, yellow, or blue, professor, or just anybody, even if you wear a status, if you wear a beard as a little status symbol, you'd be regarded as a Rastaman, you would be beaten and taken to the police station and locked up. It really was the Bustamante uh, government's first um, clash, really, with the Rastafari. And Mr. Bustamante, he said, carrying all Rastaman, dead or alive. He said, who can hold a 14? We hold on the chemistry. When he said, the jail can't hold him, throw them from Bogil. Yes. Bogil is a cemetery in Mobile. Mm -hmm. That means to kill them. Mm -hmm. huh? So we never like them sound there. Came out and said, um, bringing all Rastas dead or alive. I am a bridgewin, so we're going to have a little smoke. We go for that, we go catch our fresh now, we go collect with little money. All we hear, police, come down. Rasta, who no kill good, good police. And from that, they take us, beat us up, put Nato and into a jeep. We are in dear far. 31 days before I was sent to old general penitentiary, which is what even a wrong prisoner sent me. Because for first of all, you should go to the farm instead of the general. I was tried half naked because they beat me short off. So that's the way I try. Mr. Pilot said unto me, Mr. Brissett, I can't do better. I have to send to prison. I say, Mr. Pilot. You say, I see you, did you say I do something? So you say, when my day come, I'm going to triple your cup. And I mean it even now and forever. Them start to fling buckle, fling stone at her head, and I slip them then. And some they jam I with stick. But the one that I was watching keenly is the big, strong black guy that have a big rope. Call it around a three inches rope. Like you know, cast a cow, so every time in the wheel of rope, no, if you cast I know. I burn lightning and thunder and earthquake, and I seen fear. So I start burn the said words, them lightning and thunder, and shook him out and go up on the hill quicker than him. That's so we are feeling me. Yeah, and the kick off me door. Yeah. 
and they, they, turn, they turn up my face, turn down my face and turn me back, and they drop me back a beat with the right back and run both. So I have my ribs and broke. Two of them broke. They give me some lip, I'll knock my head. Man, I'm some fool, man, piss up myself. You know what I tell you, Bingy? And when I look, when I look, I, I sip, I sip man no our leaf with stick, stone, machete to heavy weapon them have. The the man barrack broke up by them that is so the soldier them. A blue suit them have on with helmet. Gun one of them take the gun and lick eye right as they said. Right here so I'll lick eye I drop clear like long. And the time I drop about seven of them are pure kick. Raise I up back. And button the meat, the buck up and button, button the buck up and button. When they done with when, when they done, done three man in three, then, then give it that they that they feed me. Beaten. And every one of them were, were beat me. I have to chop up, chop up hand. For hours when they lick and fish and flesh, but two hours up before they lick and lick, button and button, buck up and one another. And flick back to the to them pull muscle and all that shit then. They have to chop up their, their hand. The Friday, it was born wickedly. The hard man, the hard rasta man to not go I saw them they hard them. They kick them. They turn up them jump and rasta man. The memory of the struggle that Rastafari have gone through. Suppose they stick with their eye. In the sixties, we never have so much care. We never have so much money amongst Rasta. But guess what? There was a love and there was a unity. We need to cooperate our divine energy together. And to unite round the divine consciousness of the NCI and to love one another. Supreme. We have a responsibility and we have to make sure that this government is answerable to what happened to Rasta in 1963 and we said this without any apology. Before this call goes in 1963, you used to hear frequently of people getting seven days or 30 days or a few months for smoking possession and even trading in ganja. But they changed the law after this trial to a mandatory sentence of 18 months for a possession. First offense. And it was used as a blanket law to pull in people, Rastafarians especially. Reparation with you. Repatriation. You know, and we're not talking about free slavery. We're talking about this a government drawn you now, a them response because I see a Labour government and a them present now in our parliament. I think that them are the ones who address this thing. Injustice that has been with us since slavery was abolished. Testimonies we heard tonight were specific to the Coral Gardens incident tonight and so many others could testify of Every year, Rastas commemorate the 1963 incident through drumming and personal testimony. Testimonies like those you have heard here. But the annual commemoration is about more than what happened in 1963 it is also a celebration of how much Rastafari has thrived despite this history of persecution. And it is a window onto how the whole country holds the legacies of Western imperialism, racial slavery, and political nationalism. These are the historical foundations of contemporary violence in Jamaica 
and throughout the Americas. This is what we must now all fight to overcome.